Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Hi, everybody. buddy. Oh, oh, welcome, folks. <laughs> Gee whiz, I'm really getting excited today. Well, hey, let me, let me throw out some, some, some dates here real quick. Like, again, I'm Bruce Broussard. I happen to be uh, one, of the, one of the hosts here at the Oregon Voters Digest. Voters' pamphlets, by the way, will be mailed on 420, okay, for, between 420 and 423, okay? And, and then ballots will be mailed on 427, and that one, that's 27, 25, I guess, something like that. Yeah, 427, up in that area. But those, that's, oh, that's the time. So basically, next week is going to be kind of a prep time. You should be seeing lawn signs and all kinds of things happening, just sort of at a begin, so to speak. And then that's when it really happens. You know what I'm saying? Very, very much so. That's when it really happens. Well, today, guess what? We're going to sort of give you sort of a little, a little, a little insight in terms of what you should be looking at, uh, because now we've gotten down to the point we've got, uh, we've got the, we've got the candidates running for president of these United States, and that's what we're going to do for the first four hours. We're going to, we're going to discuss who these people are. We're going to discuss what their issues are, and hopefully, we can also talk to what, the, what we feel are the solutions to the issues that they're talking to. And I've got, I've got three brilliant individuals here with me today. And there's another person here just sort of like sitting in a kind of a surrogate role. He happens to be running for mayor, but, you know, he's just sitting up there in sort of a ghostly-like atmosphere. But we're not going to worry about this guy. We're just going to stick right to the format here. Uh, I'm going to be just a good host. And every so often he might stick his head in there, but we're going to we're gonna do that in the next half hour. You'll see him. So we'll probably have five guests at that point in time. No problem. Well, anyway, welcome to the show today. I've got Bob Williams over here to my far left, and as you look at the screen, you see Bob, there he is. You remember Bob? He's been around. He's one of the co-hosts. Okay. Then we got uh, Jim Lewinberger. You know, he's the guy with the gold coins. <laughs> oh, you see how he silver. jumped up? Silver. paper silver. Silver was a silver. The vending machine doesn't take them, though. Well, he got silver coins. No, Jim, Jim's been a co-host, too. He's been here. He's been many times over, and um, he's run for office. He's very familiar with the issues and the like. He's a local attorney. And, uh, and, and I call him a one-man shop. He's good. But when he runs for office, he's almost like this other guy that's this ghostly guy, kind of like a Don Quixote with two spears, you know what I mean? But he's out there doing it, and it makes it, it, makes it good. And we've had some exciting moments here. Welcome, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. And then we got my, my friend, dear Scott. He's the young guy on the post, but he's, 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 ga he's, gaining, he's gaining strength, and he's gaining focus, boy, every day he's here. I, you know, I keep telling people that I'm middle-aged, but people who I think are middle-aged say, no, you're not. You're not there yet. And that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> see, he's right at home. See, yeah. you, see him? you see, he's right at home. Okay, but anyway, seriously, uh, we're going to see if we can just sort of make some sense of here from a local standpoint here in the state of Oregon about, uh, you know, just kind of get sort of a feel of the impact that the national race is having on Oregon. And that's what we're going to sort of have a discussion. And when I mentioned, I said, when you think about the presidential race, it's kind of interesting, uh, the, the, the set of, you know, as, if, as if we're going into presidential race now. But realistically, it really is not going to be going until we got two finalists. But realistically, we got two finalists now. But in the form of the format, the way they laid out. Well, we got two outsiders. We got one outsider on the R side, and we got one outside on the D side. On uh, the D side, we've got uh, naturally we got Hillary Clinton. Okay, she's the insider. She's the Republic. She's the de oh, Democrat. And then uh, the outsider there is Bernie Frank. Bernie, 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 the man. Okay. And then over here on the R side, we've got uh, <clears throat> on the R side we got Ted Ted Cruz, right? This is Ted Cruz, right? That's right. And the Ted Cruz. We got Ted. Wait, you, you smile. Why are you smiling? Huh? I I I tell you how much I like Ted Cruz. Oh wait 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 wait. wait. Don't start. I've never heard anybody let, let, say that. Let me get yeah. the let me get the outsider here before we start. We got Ted Cruz and we got uh, Donald Trump. Okay? What about the other guy? Uh, the, what is the, the this governor is the governor of Ohio. Who is he? <laughs> John, John Kasich. Kasich. John who? <laughs> I don't remember. This. You, you, it has to be an even number, you know, folks. Oh. And, and I'm sort of like saying so many words. That's going to. Is that be, how Republicans really work? Well, well in all due, in all due respect, at the end of the day, it's going to be four people. They're going to fight that that situation, and at the end of the day, there's going to be two individuals, and that's that's the next show. But right now, we're going to say we're just going to bring it all the way up to this particular point, and, and to hopefully, and then discuss some of the issues as it uh, they talk about that piece. Because it was a very, it was a fun thing in terms of how all this all happened. And I'll just start with the first outsider that really, that really just threw out and really got got things going, and that was um, uh, Donald Trump. 
when you think about Donald Trump and he was running and that people had no ideas that the guy was going to be getting at this point. In but the fact of the matter is he made one statement. He talked about immigration reform. He talked about immigrants, immigration. Is more, more specifically uh, Hispanic immigration, Mexico. Mexicans, rapists, about Mexicans. murderers. That's, right. yep. he, that's what he said. And boy, I tell you, the entire country jumped on board. <laughs> In fact, he could have almost gone home. <laughs> and he could have been running the race for... But he mentioned... That was, but there was one other thing. When he talked about the, the whole issue of, of immigration, illegal immigration aspect of it, he basically said that those individuals had broken the law, which is true. They broke the law. Mm -hmm. But then he also mentioned another point about the whole issue of immigration, the fact that the people who hired them also broke the law, but he did in such a fashion from the standpoint as a developer, and people really didn't understand what a contractor was all about. Yeah, because but, you have subcontractors and the like, right? You get my point? But he's broken the law himself. He's yeah. hired illegal uh, immigrants. No. He doesn't hire Mexican illegals. He hires Polish illegal Polish, immigrants. But guess what, though? But the definition of a developer... And then didn't pay him. Well, but, but the definition of a developer <laughs> builder like he is, he hired many subcontractors, and they, in terms, were supposed to go through E-Verify. No one thought about that part. Uh, Jim? Uh, Bob? You, uh, you understand what I'm saying? I understand what okay, you're okay. saying. Next. Now we're going to go to the next one. Mm. Okay, we got Bernie Sanders, right? Now we got Bernie. I mean, Bernie's not a Democrat. He's a socialist. He's always been there. I, I, I never knew who That's Bernie was. That's assuming Democrats aren't socialists. They're no. one and the same. That's why he's so popular with the Democrat Party right really? now. Absolutely. Technically, he's an independent. He was elected mm -hmm. as an independent. He serves in the U.S. Senate as an, as independent. an independent. He's an independent. But what, 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 what Jim made the point about the fact that he's always been a Democrat from the standpoint that uh, Democrats are all socialists. Is they that right now? They are now. They weren't well, in talk Robert, to John Kennedy's time. Uh, you know, everybody have their opinion. I don't think so. And I don't think so, because uh, this is not a socialist country, and we're part of this country. We believe in uh, equal rights, okay. but we don't, we don't uh, think that everybody should have the same thing uh, financially. So isn't that what socialists, they want everybody to be somewhat equal, both financially and with, uh, and with the goods? Uh, no, that's not a democratic uh, standard. Really? Well, I don't give Bernie yeah. Sanders credit for this, because Trump's been out talking about immigration. And at the heart of that issue is things like the North American Free <clears throat> Trade Agreement, right, which in yeah. 1992 was an issue in that presidential race. The only candidate that was against it was the outsider, Ross Perot. Right. And he basically said, if you guys pass this, you will rue the day. A Barry, Bernie Sanders' point is much different than the approach that Donald Trump is. Let's build a wall. Let's point no. fingers at Mexicans, all that. I'm, I'm half Hispanic. That, that doesn't go over too well on this end, right? But what I've heard Bernie Sanders saying is that Look, maybe we need to revisit some of these free trade agreements because, you know, the constitutional libertarian side of it is that these aren't really free trade agreements. It's managed trade. It's monopolized okay, trade. Right. It's done you know, at the expense of small <laughs> business and to the benefit of big business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people are kind of starting to realize is that a lot of these big free trade agreements are worked out behind closed doors. In our last, you know, Barack Obama and his predecessor both pushed for fast track authority for these free trade agreements to have to let Congress have less oversight right. over these kinds okay. of deals. But, let, but let's throw it out, though. But the two outsiders are leading the pack indirectly without the super delegates with the, on the Democratic side. Both of them, both outsiders, Bernie and, and Donald, are leading the pack. I mean, they're not the, the traditional R's and D's, Republicans and Democrat can, 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 candidates are not leading anything. Jim, talk well, to me. Uh, well, uh, the, the only reason that Ted, uh, the only reason that, that Donald Trump was ahead is because it was just a large field, that uh, the vote was split, uh, and he's been consistently getting 35 percent of the people who are voting in the Republican primaries or, or open primaries for the Republican ballot. Um, now that we're winnowed down to three technically, but really two candidates, uh, Ted Cruz has been much more successful, and uh, he has uh, done a great job in getting delegates. He, he's, he stunned the world by winning Wisconsin. Um, uh, he, he's just been doing a, a fabulous job in, in uh, uh, preparing for, for these different state contests. And uh, I think the, the momentum has swung very much in his favor. So by the time we get, I, I don't know. But what about his peers? They don't even support him. Well, yeah, well, they are. What's that all about? Well, he's getting endorsements now from the, from the Republicans. Um, but Is that what Mitch says, McConnell? He hasn't, he hasn't supported him yet. 
Well, well, I'm pretty sure Mitch McConnell isn't supporting Hillary Clinton. Oh, but okay. it, uh, as well, far as that goes, it, it, here's where I give Ted, Ted Cruz credit, right? Okay. Even here in Oregon, a lot of his staunch grassroots supporters were on board from day one and defended him. Even when you had, you know, 15 candidates, these guys were fully on board. And in a lot of states that he's won and been competitive in, he had boots on the ground. He had a good grassroots organization. Donald Trump is kind of coasted by on his own name recognition and his own fame and popularity that he but already had. But he just had. started. But when he first started, he had nothing. No one knew him, this guy. All of a sudden, bang, he just pulled people out the house who were disenchanted, independents who were, who were Republicans. All of a sudden, he picked those guys up and he picked folks who weren't even voting. Weren't there, even everybody knew who Donald Trump was. That guy's Donald been Trump. famous my whole life. Uh, and Donald Trump did the one thing, uh, that's tabloid television. Uh, he played on on on, on uh, those people that are less educated. Uh, wait a minute, Bob. That are that, that's wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me finish now. it. He because said I, he's happy. I'm not as articulate as you know. I might he's be happy to have the uneducated vote. Yeah, he played on 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 them. The 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 uh, person that want to watch. Uh, Beverly Hills Housewives or whatever, and all those things, and that's their day. He played on their on their emotions and. But should and it, not but be that included only lasts in the process? For, that but only lasts. Be a part of the but process? what I'm saying is, he can't win with that because that only lasts for a short time. Just like those shows come and go, so does that idea that you can play on a person's uh, emotions. And and continue that over the long haul of an election. But, he, it but just he's got the most work. delegates, though. He still has the most I, delegates. I wholeheartedly right now. agree. I think, you agree with that? I think that substance matters. Yes. And when push comes to shove, when Donald Trump is asked complicated questions about complicated issues, well, simple he questions can't like the nuclear triad, <laughs> he didn't have a clue. Yeah, hmm. and that's where I look. I was on Team Rubio because I think Marco Rubio, when it came to foreign policy, because he sits on those committees, anytime those issues came up in debates, mm -hmm. he, he had was, phenomenal answers. He was there. And I knew a lot of Democrats, moderate Democrats, who said, you know, I, I could actually live with having this guy be president. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. strategically, I looked at it in terms of the Republican Party's soft spots the last couple of cycles and said, look, you guys need to do better among Hispanics. You need to do better among the youth. Uh, because they haven't these last couple of races. Now, you don't have to win these groups outright, but you need to not get blown away the way you, that you have. And I think that long term, Donald Trump is extremely bad for the party because of that stance that he's taken. You're sitting there antagonizing the largest growing demographic in this country, which is Hispanics, that long term, you're going to lose every election from here on out. Oh, yeah, and here's a secret. Ted Cruz is Hispanic. <laughs> and middle-aged. He's the only middle-aged viable candidate left but he's in the not And not liked but he's by, not Mexican. He, and he's not not liked Mexican. by, by a large majority of, of uh, Hispanics. Is he, no, he's, in, he's Cuban. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but well, uh, well, well, your, your president, uh, well, our, Reagan, our, our president? Put, them, put everybody together that speaks Spanish. Well, our president did that, No, right? your president. Well, well, that was you were here during that time, too, weren't you? Toying the term for okay. Spanic. <laughs> well, well, you did. Did. But, but in that sense, Cruz and Rubio had a lot of the same strengths because right. they were both Cuban right. and had that background. Okay, right. But guys, but at the same time, now remember now, we had 15 people, what is it, what is it about 15 people it running? 17 at one 17 point. or so <laughs> running at the same time. And these folks were all supposed to have been articulate. I mean, I mean, the top of the, uh, the whole nine yards. And here's this one loner, this one lone guy, outsider, you know, just as you say. I mean, you know, he's doing, uh, was it, uh, the, the, the apprentice program, the whole nine yard. And he just sits there and he makes one statement, illegal immigration. And all of a sudden now he's, he's one of two. But he did something else also. He, st he brought a lot of those people into that fracas that they had no, no, no knowledge of how to deal with. And that was that tabloid television. When they tried to combat him on, his, on, on things that he uh, perfected, and, uh, they were a lost cause. And so all of those people that battled him, Rubio included, are gone by the wayside. The people that did not, the two of them are still standing. But think about this. I'm going to throw something out there, guys. And I, I wanted it to go this far because check this out. What was the first thing that was on the mind of, of the voting public when they first started talking about the presidential election? Before that, what was the first thing on the, on the mind of most people? Well, we hate politicians. Mm -hmm. We hate Washington. We, we want to get rid of all of them. Okay? Let's talk a little I, bit about that. Fair? 
I think that's a, a fair uh, right. read, yeah. That's why all of the so-called cream of the crop <laughs> were gone today, right? And we only have two of the cream, uh, both on the R&D side. And then we got two guys that are basically weren't part of the deal. They were part of the crowd that said, get rid of all of them. Well, but, Ben Carson was all, as much of an outsider as anybody, and yeah. he didn't make the he didn't make the cut. Well, you know, well, I don't want to I want to make that statement. Look at Bob. Bob, leave it alone. <laughs> I'm not going to say there. Bob. Bob, I'm not going to go there. Come on, Bob. Bob, uh, what are we going to do on that one? Uh, I'm not going to go there. Okay, all right, all right. I'm not going to go. I, there. I got a smile. I got a smile, Bob. But what I, what I will never, say is that <laughs> he, people start off saying, I, "I want an outsider," right? But when push comes to shove, when they actually go to vote. They, you look at the voters' pamphlet mm -hmm. statement, especially here in Oregon. Prior governmental experience counts for something. And I will give the guy credit for the fact that he's been a private sector CEO for decades. That doesn't necessarily translate into success at that level. When you're a, pri a private level CEO, you're used to being able to make these big decisions On without, yes, but without Scott, having to go check with you know, these Scott, guys in Congress, but, these but, guys but, in but the remember, Senate. remember, Scott, I was a contractor at one point in time. I created jobs. He created jobs. There was no one on that whole crew that created any jobs. He's the only guy that was creating jobs. But, well, but this but, is it's not all about jobs. It's about a lot more than jobs. And if he can do 10%, but he's the other 90, he's hurt, he's, he's lacking, we got a problem. Well, well, You better call Houston. Well, at the same time, I'm going to still get back to Don from the standpoint. Remember now, there was a guy, gentleman by the name of, uh, was it Everett, uh, some of the guy from Mississippi, uh, African American. He was a, he, he was Medgar a, Evers? Medgar Evers, uh, Med Medgar Evers uh, brother, mm -hmm. and then he was basically supported Trump. And all he said, in Mississippi said, "Look, we want some jobs, and we want him to come over here and build a casino." He could kill it. He said, "I could care less about all this other stuff that's out there. We, my people need jobs." What does that mean? And I think the rest of the country is Yeah, up. but Donald Trump went broke with a casino. I mean, he's probably the only one who ever has. But he doesn't look too broke to me right now, though. Well, well we don't know what his true finances are. Right. Okay. He's, he's gone bankrupt. His business has gone bankrupt three. four times that we know of. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he has one broken promise after another in the business field. He, okay. He's been accused of fraud repeatedly in different civil suits, and uh, different, gar different states have gone after him for, for fraud. Okay. So I don't think the man's to be trusted at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then at the same time, Guys, let's get back to day one what got him there to begin with. Why couldn't, what if, what if, in fact, and I think it's still on the minds of all Americans for that matter, this whole issue of illegal immigration. If all of a sudden that was the subject matter, as far as I'm concerned, let's go on and solve the problem. People were looking for reform. What if they had that discussion? I mean, really had an in-depth discussion on that issue and come out with a solution. We weren't able to do that, but, and it's still sitting up there. It's not going to happen. It's still sitting up there. It's not going to Why happen. Why isn't that going to happen, Bob? Because we, America, has allowed this worm to grow. It's not a worm anymore. It's a snake. And I'm telling you, you can't kill it. It's, oh. no, it's not going to happen. We're not going to build a wall around mm -hmm. America. That's number one. And so, therefore, people will come and people will go until we enforce the law. Mm -hmm. Now, on this issue of the people that are here already, we have to come up with a solution. Uh, it's no deportation. It's a solution. And for him, to, he can say all he want about we're going to get rid of them. We're going to send them out of here. You're not. But what, what, what They're self-deporting right now. That's yeah. been the trend in immigration in America for the so last few years is that a lot of the Mexicans are going back to Mexico okay. because okay. their economy getting enough. better and ours getting worse. Right. Right. But, but what yeah. about the employers here, American employers here, who broke the law? Don't we agree? Well, then they well, tried what, to what do, do we, something what, in what, Arizona. No, what do we work. do with those employers who broke the law? Now, we had to verify. Uh, what do we do with that? I'm throwing it on the table. What do we do with that part they of the They tried that in Arizona, and it did not work. Why did it got it shut work? down by the federal government. That's yeah. why Barack Obama did not want Arizona to enforce a state law that was his pattern directly after federal well, law. Well, all he did was follow uh, Bush's uh, lead on that because Bush didn't want it either. So let's not just put everything on Barack Well, no employee Obama. wanted it. It's the, uh, that's Nobody right. Nobody wanted to go to jail. I mean, let's be honest. So let's not just put it on Barack Obama. No, everybody. It, it started everybody. with Bush, and he just carried it on. Well, well and well, I hold him up as the example, too, because when George W. Bush ran mm -hmm. for governor of Texas, both times when mm -hmm. he ran for president, 
He spoke Spanish. Right. He talks to the Hispanic community. Right. He did well. He actually did really well among that demographic. And to me, I think there's a way that you can communicate well, with them. He married Hispanic too, right? No, no, that was his, his brother. Oh, okay. Right. And, and that was the thing is that <laughs> right. you know, the day after the 2012 election, yeah. people started saying Jeb Bush, and I said, Are, are you serious? Yeah. And that's one of the big trends of this election too. I think I don't hear a lot of people talking about is that with the Citizens United decision, you've got these super PACs and people are afraid of the influence of money in politics. But the guys who had the biggest super PACs with the most money did the worst. They yeah. all fell off first. Even guys like Scott Walker, who a, a lot of the, the guys I know, the conservatives I know, even especially in this state, that was their first choice from the very beginning. Okay, Scott Walker, right? Jeb Bush, how much did he spend on his race? I mean, he an absurd it. amount of money. Mm -hmm. 100 billion, I think. But again, or again million. that yeah, was part of the establishment. I mean, mm -hmm. we got to recognize the fact that's the way it was. And I'm just saying we've just gotten to be, uh, become a more sophisticated, educated society. And I'm talking about the baby boomers' kids. The baby boomers' kids. Oh, that These folks have gone oh, to right. school, you know what I mean? They've graduated. And, hey, you know, they can add, they can read. And then all of a sudden it was, like, hey, look, no, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like that. I want things to change. They want change. And that they were part of that group. And that and then you had the, the group at the bottom. And all of a sudden, everybody's got TV. And then we've got uh, the other established group, which is, guess what? The media. Well, the and media the, pretty well dictated a lot of this Why do we stuff. call the baby boomers kids the me generation? The me generation? The me generation. It's you I, know why? It's well, because they care about themselves. And it's Bob, not, you it's not about, hey, like I that. got kids in that That's generation. <laughs> Trust me. That's what I was getting ready to say. And, he turned uh, his phone off because they're calling right hey, now. Hey, I need some money. Hey, I got to have a shirt that say, Dad, uh, walk in ATM. <laughs> I <laughs> <You> hear <know? laughs> Well, and imagine so, how their kids are. <laughs> just saying. And so, but but that's, that's the difference in, in our generation. Uh, okay. People half you're, my you're age are voting in this next election, by yeah. the way. Yeah. But our generation, we cared about, we, we, went into the system and we tried to find something to find out something this generation is all about television if it's not on tv and it's in the newspaper they won't they'll miss it well well but but did you not create that that, that, that entity you gave him this <laughs> you gave him this bob I'll talk to steve john I mean, you you. <laughs> well hey that's how you keep track of your kids right but that's driven the popularity of bernie sanders if you look yeah. at the primary results from all the states where the democrats right? have had primary okay. elections okay. and you see it hillary rodham clinton gets blown out in that group when it comes to the young folks bernie sanders is just crushing her across the well board. there's one thing i think that you got to say for bernie sanders and i think that he is the only honest candidate on the democratic ticket mm -hmm. that 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 uh <laughs> hillary clinton is is notoriously dishonest everybody knows she's dishonest she, she doesn't she says she belongs in prison well, let him get through his point let him get through his point let him, let him tell let him, let him, i mean yeah. it's easy to make a statement like that without any substance in what what has she done that that tell them tell them to get it one well we can start yeah. with i mean the law firm records we can start with the uh, wait, travel wait, 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 office wait we can i mean every this, the entire clinton administration wait every, a minute whoa whoa now you, you talking, asked me you're to talking, itemize i'm going to itemize you're talking bill let, let him talk let him talk you're she talking. was travel records she or travel office she was uh, a rose law firm billing records missing she was uh, uh, um, the, the the debacle of the of the uh, uh, the health plan that she wanted to uh, who was the president? He delegated those oh. things to her, and she screwed them up, and she's been a disaster from day one. What did she accomplish as Secretary of State? One single accomplishment, not other than the disaster of Libya, the disaster of Syria. Uh, the, the, the woman was a walking disaster zone, and, 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 and she murdered, well, I don't, she's responsible as, as, as Barack Obama for the death of our ambassador in, in Libya. Okay, let's get some response. Yeah, give me and then response. she tries to voice it off on a on a, 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 a video on on uh, the internet. Okay, and so, Bob, and respond. she knew it was terrorists who did it. Bob, respond. You got your, you're you got right. the floor. Terrorists did it, but how did she know that was after the fact? And that's the thing that gets me is that is that everyone wants to blame people for things that other people do and to blame them after they find out about it after the fact. The if ambassador they had a known, asked for security, and she refused not. to. Okay, hold on for a second. Let's, okay. Did okay. not. That, that's, what was that now? Did what, not. When the other? What? Said, uh, I don't think we need it. I don't think we need it. Those were the words. So you can. that's why I say 
go out and find out some things about what was going on. You know, I was I was like, how in the world do you allow for Americans to be killed in a foreign land? And when we and and the answer was, they got they have to go with the people that are there, telling them what's going on because they're not there. But, but, now you can blame anyone in the United States for what happened there because they held an office. But the truth of the matter is, they depend on the people that are there on the ground. But we do we do we will agree to this. And in fact, she does have problem in that arena. It's still sticking. It's well, still, it's still sticking. As on long the wall. as you keep, if as long as the. This is politics. Well, I know that. And I everybody know, has to understand how politics work. And politics work is, if I can continue to, to elaborate on a certain issue about you, you won't get elected or people will begin to have doubt. You know, as, 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 as uh, who was it, uh, Ronald Reagan said, say it, say it, and then say it again. Well, and that gets back to one of my points, is that Hillary Rodham Clinton has extremely high negatives. And there's a lot of folks that just don't like her. And this is a popularity contest, right, at the end of the day. Same thing with Trump, and especially in Oregon. Uh, OPB put out a story a few weeks ago, uh, kind of some polling that they had done that showed both of them. That's Jeff with, Mapes, right? Uh, yeah, I, I don't You know think, who Jeff is, don't you? Yeah. yeah. He's done Jeff. some things on me, too. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they, they, bo nice they both guy. had extremely mm -hmm. high negatives here in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of why you see the enthusiasm that you do for Bernie Sanders as an alternative. Now, because of the nominating process that the Democrats have with the superdelegates and all that, it, and if she does end up with the nomination, despite the fact that Bernie Sanders has won, what, eight of the last nine primaries? But she won those men in, in, at the beginning. So, um, I mean, you know, you look at what have you done for me lately versus uh, where, are, where, where, are we, where are we now? And right now, you know, I'm not against Bernie because if, if he ends up being the, being the candidate, I'm going to vote for him. I'll just say it right here and right now. You know, uh, well, I don't trust it. Ted Cruz. I don't trust Donald Trump. You know, I wouldn't trust them walking across the street and telling me traffic has stopped. Okay. You know, that's because... That's the way they are. And, and Ted Cruz had, had flip-flopped so often from the beginning of this, of this campaign. Mm -hmm. T uh, Ted. On what? Uh, he's, he, at one point, he, he, he didn't like certain things. Then all of a sudden, he did. I, I, uh, I can go What's back. Specific? And, yeah, and, and, give, me, I, give me a specific piece. I didn't come prepared for that, uh, but I'm oh, doing what, but, my, but, what but, my cohort is doing. I named examples. Give me a specific. Give me a specific. Just give us one. Oh, uh, shoot. I wish I could. I'll, I'll give it to Jim for a minute. Yeah, okay. Give, give, give me a specific in regards to uh, Hillary. Oh, yeah, that's right. He, oh, I did that. He gave those. What, what, in fact, what, what about the, the server? I mean, that's the other issue that's still there. And by the way, both the D's and the R's, are, I mean, on the media standpoint, are asking the question, why haven't we got to the point that said, okay, boom, that's over with? Right. Because still it's, keep bringing, it's politics. I'm still waiting for them yeah, to but, arrest Kitzhaber that, and Hayes. But, but a lot of times, <laughs> yeah. we, we are dependent upon that media issue as the information entity. It's politics. Yeah. I can make a dollar off of it. I'm, I'm going to keep it going. That's the that's the news media. So, but it's not just news media. It, right. News media is, is usually uh, they're they're driven by news events. Right. So right. for instance, if she was arrested, that would be a news story. Yeah. Right. And and I don't know why the FBI is holding off on this. They certainly collected more than enough information to satisfy any grand jury that she's uh, she was uh, playing fast and loose with with uh, 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 top secret information. And there are rules about how to handle internet traffic of, of uh, top secret information, and setting up your own server violated a whole bunch of those rules. What top secret information was on her server? Well, no, nobody no, knows, no, no right? Knows. They've been trying to figure that out. They got issue. it. No, no, it's still an issue. Well, the FBI it has still it. An issue. The yeah. FBI has it. No, but they got it. They got to share with the. There was no top. The last words that came out was information. Uh, they are looking at things that they think they were thinking about making, uh, looking at them as top secret, well, they as secret they information. They but they, they had not said it was. No, they haven't released it yet. Yes. Well, either way, they haven't released it. But not only right. that, there's one other thing that they haven't done. They haven't said, okay, I want to, what's the first thing they're going to do to you if you are, if they consider you a criminal or you have done something wrong? They're going to pull you in and, and, and talk to you. They haven't even asked her to come and talk to them. Well, the concern, in all due respect, the concern, like you said, is politics. You know, in all due respect, the Democratic Party pretty well run the administration right now. 
and all these folks work for the Democrat. Oh, crap. I mean, that, that's business. That's the way it does. I've seen the Senate take and make, no, make when the things R, happen in a hurry. When hurt. the R's are in, in charge, basically, it's the same process. And let's just be fair about the whole deal. Well, not ends. necessarily. When no. when George Bush was president, they prosecuted a, a senator from Alaska okay. using, uh, you know, they did it falsely. They got a false conviction, and then after he died, it was he was cleared up. So the Republicans do prosecute Republicans. But they did that to rank uh, to Charles Rankin in in New York. I don't think he's a Republican. Mm. You mm. know, so uh, I mean. And, and, and Democrats was in charge. So, well, well guys, as, as you can see, we're going to have quite a we're going to have quite a run for the president of these United States. We don't even know whether or not the four are going to be the last, the standing two. That's well, right. With true. the exception, with the exception, that, well, yes, the true. Democrats. Uh, because, because, we know one of those two is going to be it. Well, maybe not because a lot not. of Democrats are kind of upset with. Biden. I'd still love to see Joe Biden. Jump in. I was going to say, if she gets indicted, I, I'd see Joe Biden jumping in. Yeah, because I think I, a lot of Democrats. I think don't, he'd be don't better like than Bernie. either of them, actually. Yeah. yeah, a lot of Democrats don't like Bernie. I mean, they're still trying to turn around. They're, they're kind of like putting it on the side and say, "Well, yes, he is a Democrat, but no, he isn't a Democrat." But you know, I'll go with him. It's uh, not that. It's what, what's, what's wrong. I'm what, get out. One of the things that real that, quick, we're going to okay. get One of the things that 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 hurts us as Democrats with Bernie. He talks a good game, but he can't score. Right. Yeah, but he's getting a whole bunch he of He talks a good game, but he doesn't score. Well, the funny thing about him is, I don't know if, if he's imitating Larry David or Larry David is imitating yeah. him, but they, if you put those two guys on the screen, you can't tell who's who. And the thing is, well, nobody would vote for Larry David for president. He's well, a comedian. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, look, this is good. This has been good. This has been some good action. So I guess the next, next round is going to be when we have the final two, right? And we don't know where that final two is going to be or where they're going to go. In fact, it could be Bob. Oh, no, it could. And, and Jim. <laughs> But both the two of these guys. Hey, I know those guys. <laughs> I'm not running. A very, I'm a very not running diverse crew. A very, and then and then and then and then my and then my man Scott would be sitting in the background, right? Right, Scott? Mm. Yeah, I'll probably anyone. hit you up for a job. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back. Hey, anybody here? You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Okay, folks, well, we're back, and guess what? We've done the national. Now we're going to bring it home, back to Oregon. Oregon, right in Oregon. Boy, I tell you, the Beaver State, right? Right, up, right off the bat, we're going to do the Beaver State. I mean, the state where, where we've, we've had two Republican party, two Republican governors that made some very interesting statements, one of which says, what? visit but don't stay. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. oh. And that's the, ancient and then, history. And then, wow. one, and then one pulled the sign down. older than I am. And then one pulled the sign down. His name was Vic Atiyah. <laughs> Both man. neat guys. I mean, they were, they were very productive aspect of it. You know what I mean? I mean, expecting that. And that Senator would... Jackie Winters from Salem actually worked for both of them. Really? Nicole and Atiyah. Yeah. Jackie, you know Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> I saw her the of other course day, I actually, did. outside of the oh, Senate oh, President's oh, yeah. office. Okay. Well, okay, we're going to talk about the state of Oregon now for a minute. Okay, mm -hmm. gubernatorial candidate, uh, gubernatorial, the governor. we got Kate Brown, who's, who's, who's sort of the incumbent, and she's there now, and... Um, and I guess that I don't know if there's any opposition with her at this point in time. I guess she's there is, but nobody that anyone's ever right. heard so of. So it's Kate Brown, and then on the other side we've got uh, several candidates. That's uh, on the Republican side. We've got several ca candidates running, and it seems as though the the so-called front runner just recently got in. And I I, I saw him on a, a local show here, again Steve Dunn, right? Who uh -huh. uh, he, he did a show on him, and he was on. And I'm talking about Alan Alley. It's kind of interesting. Uh, Alan was there. He was very casual and. Uh, no suit and tie, just just casual kind of a guy. 
Uh, he talked about the fact that he's now in this campaign because one of his grandkids uh, sort of inspired him to run. Very interesting in terms of how he presented himself, uh, not talking about the issues, uh, you know, and then, but on the other hand, there was this, this mayoral candidate that was constantly telling me, well, we got some big issues in Oregon, you know, we got the, we're the largest city in the state of Oregon, we got homeless issues, we got housing issues, we got jobs, we got gang problems, and I'm just, the guy, just, and he keep, keeps nipping at me, it's as if to say, I, I imitate him or something, I, I always dream about this guy that's constantly on my back talking about these issues here in the city of Portland and how involved he's in. Uh, well, well, I don't know who that guy is, but we'll, we'll probably, he'll probably come up here lately in, in the conversation. But let's talk about this gubernatorial deal. We got, what is he got, Bud Pierce? Bud Pierce, who, who's a former Marine and kind of, you know, that, that kind of swear a little bit with him. You know, he, he, was up, <laughs> he was there, and then we got, we got Bud Pierce. We got, we got uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Cuff. Uh, he's a very active guy. In fact, I think he's the only one that uh, of the gubernatorial candidate that that uh, uh, accepted the invitation of the uh, of the uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the mayor or well, the mayor guy, the guy who's running for mayor here, in, invited him over and then to come and look at Multnomah County and check things out. He came over, walked the street, and did some issues. I mean, very, very interesting. But the other candidates haven't responded yet. So maybe one of these days they might. But, yeah, Bob but, Niemeyer. Yeah. And, well, the thing about Cuff is that he has actually been working it. I was out in Astoria yeah. a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he was out there talking to those folks. And you know, as someone that knows all these guys, I tend to pay attention to these things. And I actually do see some Bruce Cuff for governor signs when I make my commute from yeah. Wilsonville to Salem. I've yet to see an Allen Alley sign anywhere. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. this discussion came up the other day at Executive Club here, and that's mm -hmm. a, a monthly meeting of conservative activists, where... Some of the conservative base is saying, whoa, 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 Alan, you're just kind of kind of waltz in at the last minute and mm -hmm, assume that you're mm -hmm, going to get the nomination. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the obstacles he faces. But I think at the end of the day that, you know, and I know these guys, I like these guys just fine. I, I think Alan Alley's a good man that it have came down to it that he could do the job. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Oregon needs right now is competent governance. But it's almost like the presidential race. You got the establishment. <laughs> And you got the little people, and the, the, the point that you were making, a mm -hmm. lot of folks are concerned. They want, they want, they want, they, they're interested in those concerns, and they want some solutions. They, they want to know about what are the issues. There are some main issues here, and what are solutions? Who brings the solutions to the table? Bottom line. And then you've got Kate Brown on the other side, yeah. on the D side aspect of it. There's a concern, if you will, of whether or not we're, because they basically have been, been have had the leadership for, what since Vicatier. Uh, took office. I mean, and it's, there's been a lot of issues on the table, and uh, they're looking for some solutions. Fair? Let's yeah. talk about this. Let's well, go with Kate first. <coughs> Bob, anything, 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 anything you want to well, say about the? Well, you know, you I think look, she, you think she's she's prepared. She, she's uh, quali she qualified. She's definitely she? qualified. Okay, all right. I mean, uh, it's just it's just a matter of what, what, how much help. She will receive from our state, from our Senate, and our, well, from the state Congress. I'll just put it that way. And well, they own both. They own both ends. Yeah, yeah I'm in the super the minority there. Yeah. The yeah. So, so I don't see. I don't understand what is the issue with Kate. I mean, uh, she's doing positive things for the state. She's giving. She's. Uh, she took over at a time where things were in turmoil. I mean, well. I, for, as someone said, you guys falling off the Pacific Northwest, uh, you falling off the coast, you going into the ocean, you know, because that's how bad the politics was here when she took over. And I tell you what, you haven't heard a peep. Hmm. Oh, I think she isn't out of the woods yet because you still have major scandals involving several agencies right now, including the Department of Energy, and we're examining whether or not to reform it or just do away with it entirely. Department of Environmental Quality and their issues with pollution in Southeast Oregon. The Department of Human Services is one. now facing multiple multi-million dollar that's lawsuits that's that's for children being neglected in foster yeah. care. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, she's been doing this for a year. Uh, and it's easy to blame the predecessor and say, oh, well, it was his guys that were in here that were doing all this. But she has faced some very unique challenges and had to replace many department heads. Well, but right. a lot but of these agencies are not being run well right now. I also think that there's there's blood on her hands. And I'll tell you why. I say, I say that because until she said that the, the uh, protest at the uh, Malheur Wildlife Refuge had to be shut down, it was quiet. There was no problems. The government was keeping their hands off. Nobody was getting hurt. Then she 
you know, put, puts her nose in the situation, and then the, the heat got turned on, and ultimately uh, Lavoie Finnicum gets gets killed. I say murdered, but killed. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, as far as I'm concerned, blood is on her hands. She had no business butting herself, butting her nose into what? that. She had no business butting her nose into that. It was a it was a question, question about the the National Wildlife Refuge. It had nothing to do with state. Uh, the state, it was county and federal. Or, and federal. So was, you're telling me that someone from another state should be able to just come in here and make a determination on how they are going to run things uh, regardless of where? Well, they have a First I Amendment disagree. right to speak and they have a First Amendment right to well, then a petition speak, for redress of grievances. But you don't take over? Yeah, that, uh, so that I, could, I should be able to come and federal, take over you. But see, but, uh, Bob, in all due respect, that, that we're talking about federal lands, too. Right. And but when, they're entrusted and when, to the state. And when par great, great parts of Portland uh -huh. were taken over for the uh, Occupy Wall Street movement a few mm. years back, did anybody, were they forced out? Were they pressured like the the the, uh, the guys at the National Welfare or Wildlife Refuge were? No. Do it, and, and but hold it. They weren't pressured. To, uh, they What happened with them was that they came... And they came with an issue that wasn't even ours. Wasn't our issue. And the people in the area didn't want them there. Many did. Many, Many did. Uh, uh, more didn't. And they came to support two Oregonians who were wrongfully imprisoned. That, I, I, have, I have taken a very close examination of that case. And what happened was just flat wrong. Hmm. They were sentenced legally to 90 days and, and one year. They served those sentences. And then the feds reneged on their promise to not uh, continue the prosecution. And and, at, and they convinced the Ninth Circuit to go ahead and reinstate or inst instate a five-year sentence for each of those two men. And, how did and that Oregon was under the behest of Amanda Marshall, who resigned in disgrace. She was originally right. overseeing the Kitzhaber investigation, but she was sexually harassing a, a married subordinate. So we have somebody... <laughs> Like our investigators need to be investigated. It's kind of well, where we're know, at. That's, as a that's state the other right thing now. that we talked about. What about the the whole idea of the Kitz Hopper situation? That was a pretty heavy piece. There was. I mean, uh, we still I haven't had an ethics you want to, If you're going to have if you're going to have uh, enforcement of law. Kate Brown, th and that was that was state law that, that Kit Saber was involved with. That's what state law was involved with. What his girlfriend was doing, and why hasn't that prosecution begun? But you know, why doesn't she put her nose into that? Well, you know, in all due respect, uh, well, my, the, the the local mayor here, I mean, uh, 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 the, one of the one of the candidates running for mayor was concerned about the fact that uh, uh, my, my our dear friend Earl De Pearl was uh, also involved in the process. Hmm. You you remember Earl? Yeah. Earl. 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 Uh, thank you, you remember him a little bit? Yeah. Okay. But he went down there and stuck his nose in there, too. And I thought that was an interesting piece. Well, down in, uh, in uh, Southern Oregon? Yes, sir. But, but isn't that federal? Was that? Isn't that federal? No, but I want him to stick his nose here in the city of Portland. Fine. I want him to stick but it that's for not, the gang that's, problem. I want to see. Not, I want, I want him, him to justify the marijuana situation. I want to. I want him to justify why is he spending so much time with again Senator Ron Wyden about trying to get the get the feds to approve the 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 the, 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 the money is going into the federal and in, into federal institutions. Well, if you can make if if uh, if a state can make it a business, why shouldn't it? Why shouldn't the people be able to use the banks in that state? to put their money away. Well, bottom line is that marijuana is still against the law federally. There was an article, I think, in is that right? Willamette yeah, Week that it just is. came out it the is. other day that it's going to be reclassified or expected mm. to be reclassified sometime this summer and that they've communicated that to some of our federal representatives, well, which is essentially all they've had to do all along. I've but we got issues. I'm just, right. I'm just throwing yeah. it on the table and say we've got some issues here and, and people are looking for leadership. Right. We're really looking for leadership, and and that's a that's a major problem. And as you know, being that this is the one of the largest city in the state of Oregon, we've got some major problems in this city. And I'm thinking about two people that that have been 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 i.e. well respected by some in the communities, i.e. And, and, and for for quite some time, and we still have major problems. Well. I think beyond a so certain what do we point, do? It, it's incumbent I'm on just, you. I'm just, it, it, you hear this conversation going on for a long time about leadership. We're looking for leadership. I, I've spent a lot of the last couple of years doing grassroots training and involvement with these different groups and trying to teach people to be their own leaders. Yes, you know? And that's a lot of what I've seen. I mean, I started so off as a small town newspaper out? reporter, you know, covering yeah. city council meetings in places like Rogue River and Cave Junction. And I've seen people take on leadership positions. Some of the best leaders that I've seen are people who 
didn't want leadership at all, but didn't see anybody else doing it and decided to do it themselves. So that would be my advice to anybody who's looking for leadership is but be Scott, the leader. But, but you Scott, can be the leader. But Scott, we have a system. We, 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 we've got a system that says, okay, fine, we're looking for leadership. We go through a process of electing someone to mm -hmm. represent us. That's what we've got. But that's I, what we're trying to straighten up. But I'm up. not looking for them to be my leader. I'm looking for them to take care of the issues uh, that we feel are necessary that needs to be taken care of. But that's what your elected official is supposed to do. They're not supposed to be the leader. That's like putting the cart before the horse. Well, they're supposed, what's they're supposed, to supposed to be able to find out, just to realize what is needed in the area in which they represent and to help take care of that issue. No, but uh, suggest, those issues. Well, but but they're not supposed to tell me what I need in my neighborhood. But, Bob, that's, that's, but that's, that's why not what they I elect want. them, Bob. That's, That's not why they why, elect them. No, it's not. No. But if you're going to sit and wait for some leader, somebody else, to solve all your problems for you, then you're going to continue to be disappointed and disenfranchised. What Indeed. I'm saying is you might some you might have to do some of it yourself. So be the leader that you're not seeing anybody else being. Boy, I tell you, boy, you better, you better tell somebody <laughs> here in the city of Portland something. Well, we the, the, that's any. all. That's the, the the genius of the the American system is that the people, individuals, are supposed to make their own decisions. Okay, we are people. <laughs> Exactly. We're supposed to, we are the sovereign. It's not a king. It's not somebody who was right. elected I agree. by us. I agree. We are to be our own leaders. And and, and we should, and, and frankly, one of the things that, that separates uh, libertarians, people of my orientation, and uh, socialists, is um, we, I didn't say you were socialist. <laughs> no, I, 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 I saw it go by. I saw it go by. Yeah, but you yeah, jumped. Yeah. Both I, I saw it go by. Both of you jumped. I did not <laughs> jump. I saw it you go by. You guys jumped. <laughs> and that's why Jim acknowledged that. Now, yeah. then we're getting off the subject. Well, I'm sitting closer to both of them than you are. That, 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 that was a way of trying to get off the subject. Going on, Jim. Libertarians. <laughs> want to be able to make make their own decisions and and uh, and not have people tell them to stop doing what they're doing. Okay. So, for instance, if they want to cut down a tree in their yard, they feel that they should be able to do that. But uh, if you, you can't do that in Lake Oswego with a, without getting a permit from the city first. And uh, so, in other words, the city of Lake Oswego thinks it has a. a, a veto power on what I do with my property in Lake Oswego. Right. Um, I, you know, now there, there is a balance. There, there has to be some balance because I can't legitimately poison the river, for instance, the Willamette River, and, and, and it, I should be prosecuted if I do that because that, that should be that, as poisoning. And so there has to be some balance about, you know, enforcement and, and but, but people as a rule should be allowed to run their own lives. And I tell you, we're going further and further away from that. The the newest thing we've got, um, we're being bookended now. Washington and California just well, Washington is Seattle first, but fifteen hour, fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage. California's gonna be fifteen hour minimum wage statewide. Uh, it's just a matter of time before that's gonna creep into to Oregon as well. Is well, here? Well, July first. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's no, no, a, well, no, at no, least no, for Portland, Portland, the rest of the state, yeah, the not so the state, much. Yeah, no, it's not a no. It's a gradual deal. Now, remember, yeah. now, it's not. It's not a total. All of a sudden, fifteen bucks. Well, well I mean, we're going there. To, we already have decided. Someone has decided oh, that yeah, we're yeah. going to do but fifteen in Portland, but it's going to be that's twelve downstate. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. might not survive court challenges. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's right. good. It's <laughs> going to destroy employability. It's going to destroy employability for unqualified people. Mm -hmm. That's how people become qualified. They they get a job that where the employer can afford to pay them, and then they develop skills and they can they can earn more and more as they develop skills. But when you set a minimum like that, the the, the minimum is going to be so high that that people who are unqualified to earn that are not going to get hired. And they're going to they're going to wither and die. They're not going to uh, become valuable. They're going to continue to vegetate and and uh, become increasingly disenfranchised and increasingly frustrated because they're not able to get a job. Okay, another now, issue, real quick. We got about four minutes or so. Well, I want me, to throw some other just, real quick now because I got okay. I got, this we got is move real quick. Quick. That is the, is what the line that has been used for years and years and years to hold people back. Uh, you're going to be disenfranchised because the people that are not educated or uh, skilled enough to hold certain jobs are getting paid too much. That don't wash. We that you know we found out years ago when I was a union rep that that's not true. Okay, so yeah. so we're saying to the employers just take it now and forget. 
You know, that's no. funny. I, I look at my Facebook page today and it always does like memories. So it says yeah. this time last year, I posted a picture of myself at my first job washing dishes at this upscale restaurant in Grants Pass. Right. right? right. And, and if you work there, you couldn't afford to eat there. Right. I, I most definitely couldn't. It was like mm -hmm. 50 bucks a plate back then. I said, OK, well, you know, I don't remember taking my then girlfriend there once and God, that pretty well wiped out my whole check. But now you can. But I don't know. Now I've got kids, so yeah. If I miss something but, for a week, <laughs> right? Yeah. If I don't pay rent, yeah. sure. Yeah. Tell me this: Do we have a homeless problem in the state of Oregon? Sure. And and the problem with us, as well as nationwide, is essentially some some people made a decision it was wrong to put people in mental hospitals and keep them in mental hospitals, and so they they broomed the mental hospitals, and so all these people that have not getting treated the necessary treatment to uh, work with their mental illnesses are out on the street trying to fend for themselves, and they're incapable. Society should take care of its least uh, advantaged, and and that's one of the reasons we had. Uh, mental hospitals to to take in people that couldn't care for themselves. And we don't do it. that anymore. Yeah, we close. They put them out on the street, basically. What about marijuana? Do you think that's going to succeed here? I mean, I realize we've had we got two states sort of squeezing this. We're kind of like a, we're sitting right in the middle of it now. Is marijuana going to be something that's going to be successful from an economic oh, standpoint? Huge thing. But are, it's, it's a very nice, mild, uh, high. Uh, it's all that complicated, kind of stuff. Bruce. I've got a case down in, in Cave Junction, your old stomping okay. grounds. But Pat Kelly, my buddy, the city attorney, flipped you that case? No, no. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> I got two neighbors, and they share a domestic well. And uh, my clients uh, are as convinced, and I think we can prove, the next-door neighbors have been growing marijuana commercially. Yes. You can't use domestic well to grow marijuana, and they've been using that domestic well water to irrigate the commercial mm. marijuana. Oh, wow. you got to have a water right to grow uh, marijuana or any other commercial crop, mm -hmm. and they don't have a water right. And from what I've been told by the water master, they can't get a water right. So... Uh, there's, there's going to be a more developed, you know, marijuana wants, wants water. I think it's 30 gallons per day for a mature plant. Hmm. And there, there just isn't enough water to meet the needs of the marijuana growers if they do it legally. And so they have a, a rich tradition of not worrying about the laws. And so they're continuing that rich tradition of not obeying uh, the laws. Right. Now it's water rights laws. What, what are we, what's going to happen down in that area? Well, so, right so what, what it is is that was one of... Are the law or what? What's the deal? That was one of the few issues that we punted. Uh, at the state level, legislatively, mm -hmm. uh, the other on that was banking, where we said, "Okay, well, <laughs> okay, <laughs> kick that can down the road." <laughs> Department of Revenue is just commingling that cash with other cash, mm -hmm. which is apparently the way they're going to make it work. But yeah, the water issue, I think we'd formed a work group or a committee to kind of look at what that looks like going forward because of these kinds of issues. Because you're right, I mean, it hasn't been addressed and. Uh, legislatively at that point, we said, this is going to require a closer look than we're able to give it right now. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, an, an, another thought that comes to mind when you think about probably come up in 2017. We, we, we got a housing issue aspect of it, too. But that money, that money, you know, that illegal money that we're talking about, right? Uh, it's kind of like drug money, right? It is drug and money. It's drug money. So uh, what did we do once back in 97 when we basically cracked down on drugs? We came out with a thing called RICO, the RICO Act, right? Mm -hmm. So realistically, um, <laughs> and I think about the housing, whatever, so maybe we, the RICO Act should be coming into this issue. Should they not be confiscating that money and all the, all the goodies that goes with it? And the current federal I mean, policy you, is that of I mean, non-enforcement. Uh, am, am I getting to other, other areas that... Uh, no, it's, it, it, it's absolutely fascinating, and that is a big issue that hasn't been—it has been punted down the road so far, right. but right—and it could all change uh, with the next president because right now the the official policy is they're not going to prosecute if you obey state law, and uh, but that that is that is not a law. The Congress didn't pass that. Right, right. It's the it's the executive uh, branch in this case of President Obama saying we're not going to prosecute mm -hmm. if you obey state law. But the next president may have a completely different view of things. Mm -hmm. But it's against so, the law. It's against federal it law? It's against it's federal law. law. Now, are you telling me that the feds are going to come in and take over the state of Oregon and tell us what we can and cannot no, they, do? But they uh, have what laws law. we can no, and cannot make? they have make? a RICO right. law that's on the table. Federal, we got RICO on the table the right federal now. It's, government, a, it's against the law. The federal government claims to own 51% of Oregon's land right now. Yeah. BLM, Forest Service, uh, okay. Army Corps. And I'm telling you, you know, you... you, you, you <laughs> They got to get the they got to get the cooperation of the sheriffs to to enforce things, but uh, uh, that's an open question. The reason the way they get cooperation for local law enforcement is they bribe them, they give them the proceeds of what they take. Mm. So it's you know government officials, local government officials can certainly be bought by federal government officials. Oh yeah.
Uh -huh. They can be bought, but I'm just, I'm, I, my question is, uh, in order for them to enforce a law that, uh, that, a state has, uh, that a state has and for them to circumvent that law, that's going to take a heck of a whole lot. But I'm and still, I don't think that's coming. But I'm well, still thinking about this RICO <laughs> thing because in all due respect, remember the Clinton, it was, it was a bill that basically put that piece in the you know, basically anti-drug routine. And then that, that's another sore point that's mm -hmm. coming out now in the election, the presidential election, from the standpoint they're really jumping on Bill and, and Hillary as a result of that, mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. that they've basically been thrown in, thrown in a lot of these young people, et cetera, et cetera, yep. that came out with RICO. And now, since then, they're and they're not wrong to criticize her and him for that either. Yeah, but my but friend, no, but my Congress point, passed the law. No, they, no, no. You've you, got to remember something: the president of the United States does not make law. Congress is the law-making body of this country. But he introduced it, and he introduced it, and they said, "Yeah, they passed it." Bernie and all the rest of the Republicans and Democrats. I mean, that law passed by close to almost a, a close to 100 percent. And but we have and, to remember this was almost 20 time, years ago, too. It was needed. Yeah, and but, at the time, but, but the names yeah, yeah. that people were being called was was correct. You know, so yeah, but, all but, of those, but Bob, things, but Bob, were, all but Bob, those things were going Bob, on and it was in, all, in all right. In all due respect, Bob, the young blacks weren't importing the, the, uh, the drugs in the community. No, I think our uh, education system was, was it Nor well, Nor Ager, somebody no, 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 didn't he point, go to jail for but that? My, but or my something? point: everybody was smoking. <laughs> everybody was smoking weed. It's just how the, it's how he was laid out in regards to that community. And yeah. Yeah. Bill, Bill Clinton also Clinton. signed the Defense of Marriage Act. They've always, they've always been yeah, dedicated. They've always been dedicated. The black community has always been dedicated to the Clintons. Got me? Yeah. But this that piece that came out was a heavy piece, and the, and the new generation of of young uh, blacks, if you will, are coming back. It's coming back to roost. Well, you have to remember one, one thing, minute. and I remember this very well. Real quick, is that there was a there was a major epidemic going on at that time where blacks were killing blacks, uh, kids. I mean, we were finding kids in the alley. We were finding, you know, they weren't just drive-bys. These were just murders where kids were being but, but, killed, but, but and that law was passed. In, in a, in a so way to, kill all to, blacks. to help, to kill not, all to, blacks. not to kill, but to stop the killings. Okay. That was what that all law right. was about. That's you don't need to go we back might, and we, read might, that. we have to have a discussion on that piece because, yeah. it, because the Clinton was, was that's, a, that's a pretty heavy piece because we're trying to reform things right now. Well, everybody has said that was then, okay. and, 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 and you know, looking back 20 years, it wasn't uh, all parts of that law wasn't a good part, wasn't good. Right. Well, well no Bernie need. Sanders needs more than that to get the African American community's support. Well, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Well, now it's much more than that. Good. Well, anyway, this has been good. What do you guys think? Are we, uh, we're going to have another session here. And we still time. have a lot of other things to talk about. You haven't interviewed, you haven't interviewed the mayoral candidates. We, maybe we'll get one next time around. Who's running? Uh, <laughs> gee whiz, you know, do respect that. Uh, that There's is a Vietnam issue. veteran that's running. I would like to know why one of the candidates doesn't show up to uh, any of the debates. Well, very simple. They've got to get themselves organized first. Before <laughs> I saw people walking I mean, out yesterday. You, you've got to give them a chance. you got to give them a chance. Look, guys, we've run out of time. Thanks very much for being with us. Appreciate it very much. And I'm sure the viewing artists really appreciate it, too. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next week with another Dynamo, especially with these guys, the three, four musketeers. No, the three. Those are the three musketeers. I'm D'Artagnan. <laughs> Have a good one.